Hi, let's take a look at an example of kinematics in sports. So, whenever an athlete is trying to run, the feet of that athlete need to be able to push off the floor. Now, as we dive into chapters 4 and 5, and we start talking about friction, we'll start to see why we end up getting a maximum possible acceleration there are other sort of biological reasons too why we would want to cap that maximum acceleration mostly preventing sports injuries so if you take a look at recommendations for designing athletic shoes the recommendations say that the maximum acceleration that we would be able to achieve under those conditions would be about 7.8 meters per second squared. So let's say that an athlete has an average step of 1.0 meters and they can take four steps from rest. How fast will they be able to be traveling after four steps of constant acceleration? Well, to solve problems, we can always think about a four square game where we have known information, unknown information, relevant equations, and then any concepts that we know to work with. So since we're talking about kinematics and specifically constant acceleration, the rule for constant acceleration is five thirds. There are five kinematic variables that we can know. Once we've identified three, we can solve our problem. So our five variables, our first is our displacement. For one meter steps, our displacement is going to be four meters. V initial, rest. Rest means we're stopped zero meters per second. V final, we don't know that, but that's what I want to know. How fast can you be going? So V final is one of our unknowns, acceleration. I mentioned that the maximum safe acceleration would be about 7.8 meters per second squared. So if we want to go the fastest, we want the maximum acceleration that we can get. And note I said maximum safe acceleration. It is possible to accelerate more than this, but we're not doing that. And time. We don't know how much time it's going to take for this to happen. We could solve for it. We could find it because we found three. So that means we can find our other two. But since here I'm just looking at final velocity, I'm going to say I'm going to work with an equation of motion that doesn't use time. So one way to write the equation of motion without time is to say that our displacement, which I have, is equal to my final velocity squared, which I need, minus my initial velocity squared, which I have, divided by two times the acceleration, which I have. Now, it's really tempting to just jump right in and plug in numbers because we have numbers and then we can solve. But if you rush right into that, then you're going to have to, every single time you write those numbers, keep writing them, keep writing the unit, carrying out possible extra digits, where if we do all of our algebra first, there's a lot less that we need to write. The other thing to think about is there are three, four things in this one equation. There are three other ways we could write that equation. Here, it's solved for delta x, but we know delta x. We don't need to solve for delta x. We could solve this for a, we could solve this for V initial, or what we need to do is solve it for V final. Once we write out all four ways that we can write out that equation, we've done all the algebra we'll ever need to do. Everything beyond that is just going to be plug and chug. So let's take this equation and solve for V final. So here, I'm just going to, since V final is on the right, rewrite my equation to put my V final on the left. Just because our brain really likes looking for X equals, Y equals, Z equals, whatever equals, because that's how it's drilled in in algebra. So 
if we write it so that what we're looking for is on the left, it makes it a little bit easier to solve, not because it's an any harder problem, but because it looks a little bit more familiar to how we learned that problem. So, if I multiply both sides by 2 times a, I get rid of my denominator, and I have v final squared minus v initial squared is equal to 2 times my acceleration times my displacement. So, now, to isolate that v final term, I can add v initial squared to both sides. So, v initial squared minus v initial squared cancels out. That leaves me v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2 times my acceleration times my displacement. And then the last step to undo a square, we take the square root. The square root of v final squared is just v final. And then I have the square root of v initial squared plus 2 times a times my displacement. So v initial is 0. Hooray, that term goes away. Now I have a 2. My acceleration I said is 7.8 meters per second squared times my displacement of 4 meters. So the first thing I always like to do is check my units once I do the math. Just because if you check the units and the units don't work out to the units you're looking for, your math cannot be correct. So I have meters times meters under the square root. So that would give me meters divided by second squared under the square root. The square root of second squared is seconds. So I have meters per second, which is a very happy unit of velocity. Now if I take 2 times 7.8 times 4, I get just under 63, and the square root of that to two significant digits is going to give me 7.9 meters per second, which is right around 18 miles per hour after four quick strides. Now that's, again, sort of a high-end estimate, but it gives you an idea of what people are capable of based on the limits that we have with how we can interact with our world. Thanks for watching.